The Steam Deck is a great handheld gaming PC. Everyone knows that. Even this guy. Look at him, playing his Steam Deck, so happy, without a care in the world. If only life were so simple for all of us. The best part about the deck that sets it apart from every other handheld gaming PC out there is the fact that it runs SteamOS instead of stupid Microsoft Windows for jerks. Using SteamOS, you don't have to muck about with Windows updates and start menus and Microsoft Paints and all that malarkey. You can just whip out your deck, turn it on, and be playing a game in like four seconds. But did you know that underneath that shiny, clean, simple interface that we call SteamOS, there's actually a full-fledged computer running? Of course you didn't. Nobody knows that stuff. And that's why I'm here today, making this video. Because I know about that stuff, and I'm here to tell you that, yeah, this Steam Deck is a computer and there is a full desktop computer experience waiting for you to explore in your deck. And today you're going to learn how to do it, what it is, what it's like, how to use it, how to install programs and do computer stuff. And most importantly, you're going to learn about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, this is a this is a special day for you. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. About a week ago during a storm, my power went out. I didn't know how long it would be out, so I grabbed my laptop, but I only had a little bit of juice left. I did some emails, posted my question of the day in my Discord server, TechDweeb's Discord thing, which you should totally join, and then I sat on a chair in the, in the dark silence, lamenting that I didn't have a computer to distract me from the existential dread. And then I remembered that I actually did have another computer lying around, all charged up, that I'm ready to go, that I could use. The Steam Deck, of course. I booted it up into desktop mode, tethered it to my phone's data, connected a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, and I started poking around. I installed my browser, which is Google Chrome, which was ridiculously easy, and then I just kind of used the PC as a normal PC. You know, watching YouTube, writing a script. I started installing some other programs and playing around, and about three hours into the experience, I realized that this is legit. There is no reason why you couldn't just use the Steam Deck as a straight up computer. This thing can do more or less everything that you could want to do. For one day, the Steam Deck was my computer, and it was shocking how normal it felt to use as a desktop computer. And that experience inspired this video. But why would we want to use the Steam Deck as a computer? Don't we all have computers anyways? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Uh, tech dweebs like me and maybe you and probably this guy have multiple computers, but not everyone does. Heck, most Zoomers are convinced that they don't need anything other than their phone as long as it can play TikTok and Among Us. The Steam Deck is cheap as far as computers go, but it's not cheap, cheap, you know? So for people looking to save some money, someone who wants a Steam Deck but also needs a computer to do computer stuff from time to time, there's a good chance that they could just skip buying the computer and spend that money on Steam games and root beer instead. Not only that, but since the Steam Deck is portable, it's kind of redundant to feel like you need to bring the deck and a computer with you when you're ooting the boot, considering that the deck is a computer. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse on hand, you can just toss that stuff in your tech purse along with your deck and you got yourself a portable desktop PC set up there. And using the deck as a computer also just sort of feels right. But because the, the Steam Deck, to me, feels like a one-size-fits-all device. It can play old PC games, it can play modern PC games, it can play retro games. It's like your gaming Swiss army knife that can do so much stuff, so why not use this other side of the device to its full potential to get the most out of your favorite thing in the world, the Steam Deck. But TechDweeb, you ask, how do I even do this desktop mode stuff that you're talking about? Well, don't worry, buddy. It's not hard at all. All you need to do is hit the power button, scroll down to switch to desktop, and then oh, that, that that's it. Then you're in the desktop. And you can use it like this, but before we do that, let's get this thing properly set up to use as a desktop, which means that we're going to want a, a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor. I'm going to use this KVM monitor that I have here, which is the Pixio PX277 Pro, my favorite monitor to use with the Steam Deck. Ch check out the review and the link for this in the description below if you want to know more about it. But if you don't have a fancy KVM monitor, you can just use a dock and uh, connect a monitor with HDMI and use either a wired keyboard and mouse or Bluetooth. 
If you want to connect up a Bluetooth device, it's basically the same as on Windows. You click the little Bluetooth button in the taskbar down there and then open the Bluetooth settings, click add new device and pair it up. You can connect up keyboards, mouses, controllers, whatever you want to connect up. When you plug in a monitor, it'll either mirror your display or just display on your external display or it'll extend your desktop. I can't remember which one it does by default, but you can easily change it to be whatever you want by right clicking on the desktop with the mouse or left trigger clicking with the dex controls and then go to display configuration and then you can set up the uh, the screen settings however you want i usually extend the display so that i have a dual display setup which you should probably do too so you can work on your big screen and binge tech me videos on the bottom screen but for the purpose of this video i'm just going to show it on one display so you can see what i'm doing nice and big and now that we're all set up in desktop mode with our, our screen set and our peripherals ready to go, it's time to properly introduce you. Welcome to Linux. Now, I know that the idea of Linux seems weird and scary to you, unless you're a Linux user, in which case you know all this stuff and you're just watching this video for entertainment or to find out what I got wrong and grill me in the comments below. <laughs> Looking forward to that. But for Linux noobs like maybe you and definitely me, this whole Linux desktop experience will actually feel surprisingly familiar. I don't know a Fedori from a Buntutu, but I had no problem finding my way around on the deck. So basic stuff is the same as you're used to. Just like Windows, you can move your windows around and resize them and minimize or maximize or close them at the top right. You've also got a taskbar, which I think is called the panel in Linux. And you can see icons for the apps that are currently running, which you can pin as shortcuts, just like in Windows. And there's an applications menu or whatever it's called, which is it would like the start button where, where you can access all your applications and stuff. Except unlike Windows, you don't have micro off trying to shove ads in your face when you're trying to open Chrome. You've got a settings app, which is just like the settings in Windows. In here, you can access all the settings that you need to set your settings, change your view mode, change your desktop or monitor settings, access your device settings, system settings, all those settable settings. And for navigation, you've got a file browser, which is called Dolphin. No relation to the emulator or the fish. It's just a program that you can use to browse your files and it behaves more or less like the Windows file browser. You've got familiar folders on the left, like uh, like home and desktop and download and pictures. Oh, oh don't, don't mind that. You've got your drives below that. Your main partition on your main drive is called home and this other stuff underneath, you can ignore most of that because that's Linux bull crap. And any removable drives like SD cards or USB drives will be at the bottom. You can browse your files, move your files, even copy and paste your files if you're feeling spicy. But TechDweeb, you say, what about programs? Gaming is fun and all, but what about browsing the web and watching movies and spreadsheets and editing photos and videos? And to that, I'd say, don't, don't worry about it. You could do all that stuff because installing programs to do all that isn't just as easy as it is on Windows. It's actually easier than it is on Windows. And then you'd say, oh my God, that is crazy. How do you do it? And I'd say, check this out. And then I'd show you this. Linux on the Steam Deck has a built-in app store called the Discovery Store. Except instead of buying programs, everything is free, I think. Uh, everything I looked at was free. Apparently, this is a GUI that will automatically download and install Linux applications from Flathub, whatever that is. It do doesn't matter. All you need to know is that installing stuff is as easy as finding what you want and clicking the install button. You can install Google Chrome or whatever browser you like, and then you can immediately watch a Tech Me video. Oh, what's that? You're not subscribed yet? Weird. What's wrong with you? You can install VLC for watching uh, movies. You, you can install Spotify to listen to music. You can get a Microsoft Office alternative called LibreOffice. If Google Docs and Sheets isn't your thing, you can get a really cool photo editing program called Krita, which is like a free version of Photoshop. And for vector art, like Adobe Illustrator, you can get Inkscape. And you can get an awesome free video editor called Caden Live. If you haven't noticed, I like to make videos. I may, I may, I've made a few in my day. So I was curious how well editing videos would work on the Steam Deck, so I took it upon myself to make a short video using Caden Live. And as luck would have it, I needed to make a short video for today's sponsor, TomTalk. I made this little sponsored segment in Caden Live. Let's watch it, shall we? 
This video is sponsored by TomTalk and their Arcos G47 Travel Bag for the Steam Deck. This thing is made for handheld PCs like the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go, and it's an awesome way to travel with your tech toys while keeping them safe. The comfortable shoulder strap means that you can lug this thing around all day. The unique W-shaped EVA structure inside will shield your device from accidental bumps or hadoukens. There's room inside to hold a controller and charging block, and the extra pockets can carry it adapters or cables or other important things. If you want to get your own Arcos G47 travel bag for your Steam Deck or your cat, just check out the link in the description below. So yeah, that thing that you just watched, I made that in Caden Live right on the deck. I just I brought my video clips from my camera into the deck and created a new project and started poking around. And it was actually surprisingly easy. I had no problem figuring it out really quick. I'd have to experiment some more to figure out the best workflow if I was going to use this permanently. And I, I definitely missed the performance of my monster editing PC. But this actually worked totally fine. And th this would totally get you by in a pinch. So basically, there are very very few programs that you can't run in Linux that you can run on the PC, and for those few that you can't, you can usually find some good free alternatives. And of course, you can play games. Ordinarily, you wouldn't bother playing games in desktop mode, you just use SteamOS, but wh when you're in desktop mode, you can play your games. If you're using this as a desktop, you can just launch those same games and run them right there in desktop mode. It saves you the trouble of going back and forth from SteamOS. When you're in desktop mode on the deck, Steam also functions in desktop mode, so it ends up behaving just like it does in, in Windows. You can run it in windowed mode or big picture, but you do lose out on your Steam Deck specifics, in-game settings, and menu stuff that you get on SteamOS. It's really just a desktop version of Steam that you have here, which is fine because you're using this thing like a desktop, right? If you have a mouse and keyboard attached, you can play games with those. Mouse and keyboard are the ideal controls for lots of types of games like strategy games, first-person shooters, and match three puzzle games. And if you're using the Steam Deck with an external display, you can run games at higher resolutions and frame rates than you can on the deck. If you have a monitor that's like 1080p or more, or if it supports high refresh rates, you can run those games that you have on the deck at those higher refresh rates and resolutions and get a more traditional PC gaming experience. Granted, the, the Steam Deck isn't a beast of a gaming PC, but there is a ton of older games and low spec games on Steam that run just fine at higher settings, even on the modest little Steam Deck. There are a lot of reasons that you'd want to have a computer in addition to the deck. There are issues with running Adobe programs in Linux. There might be other Windows programs that you want to run. You can't run Xbox Game Pass PC games. And if you're doing lots of, you know, like processor intensive work, you'll probably find that the deck can't hold a candle to a big beefy PC. But if you're doing basic stuff, or if you just like the idea of using the deck as your computer, I see no reason that you wouldn't be able to not just survive, but thrive. And I have to admit that the minimalist within me loves the idea of this. The, the idea that this Steam Deck can do so much gaming and also be a computer all in a neat, tidy little package that you could bring around with you. It's yet another of the Steam Deck's magic tricks, and I'm looking forward to playing with this more and figuring out some more fun things that you can do in Linux, and hopefully uh, making future videos on this topic for you guys. Uh, speaking of which, I wanted to ask, for you Linux dweebs out there, please let me know in the comments, what fun, cool Linux things should I try in desktop mode on the deck? Teach me your ways, you gods amongst mortals. If you don't have a Steam Deck and you want to get one, there's a link to where you can buy one from Valve there in the description below. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you are new to the channel, I'd love it if you subscribed so that we can find each other again, lest we get separated and lost in the algorithm. If you like this video, then check out this video, my showcase of the top 10 games that everyone is playing on their Steam Decks. I really liked making that video. There's a link on the screen now and down in the thingy below. And that's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.